will be proven by history. And so we do what we do at this time, despite the arrogance and the ignorance and the utter dire medical attention these people need who are insane because they will not succeed over time. They will not succeed. Not they cannot. They will not succeed. Why? Because it was promised thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago, that this is the end. Not the end of the world. Well, it is the end of the world in terms of their world, but not continents blowing up and billions of people dying and you know, the whole fear, which is their fears. The fears that we see in Hollywood are their fears. Yes, it is the end of their world as promised, but it is also the harmony promised to us, the beginning of a new world of sanity promised to us. Well, let me cover two things, EINs, trust accounts, and then I'll wrap up for, for questions. On the issue of EINs, the sticky question that everyone's getting stuck on is 7A and 7B. 7A is for the uh, responsible party and 7B is any existing EIN, ITIN and SSN. And so a number of you have received letters back from the IRS, faxes and so on, that say we need your SSN and rejection of the number of the grantor. Now, I'm not an expert in... IRS documents, thank God. But So what I've done is I've taken on advice and experience of a number of you that have helped to put together what we felt was the best and most respectful way of uh, registering for an EIN. And remember, we're just doing this as a courtesy. Not having an EIN does not mean at all that anything that we are doing is not legitimate. It doesn't. We're doing it as a courtesy to the system to say that unlike the way their system is out of control, we will do things properly. We will do things respectfully. We will do things peacefully. We're not here to usurp the principles of law. We're here to restore the law, as, as we spoke of last week. So if the IRS were to reject us in attempting to be lawful and peaceful and respectful, then at the end of the day, that is an extreme dishonour on them. Now, I don't believe, albeit some may disagree, I don't believe the IRS is playing games per se or necessarily dishonouring. What I believe we are getting is we're getting a reflection back on the limits of their system and, in fact, a, a, an extreme politeness by the IRS compared to the IRS in action going after people on liens and in action trying to put people in prison. If the IRS want to be hard-nosed, they have shown well and truly that they have no problems in organising Kevlar teams to come to people's homes and throw people in prison. So if you're getting semi-polite letters back saying, no, we want this, don't treat it as the IRS being obstructive. They are going out of their way to show that they are trying to be honourable. That's my opinion. So that tells me we are not getting the EIN applications done properly. That's what it tells me. So that means that on responsible party, there are two ways to list a responsible party. One is if the trust is granted by some higher entity, and so you're listing the higher entity as a responsible party. And that's exactly the way we've done it now. The other way is to name the responsible party that effectively is in autonomous control of the entity, such as the name of the trustee. That's the other way to fill in responsible party. Now, if you are living outside of the United States, then, of course, you won't have an SSN. So you'd put Franco Collins, and in that column 7B, you'd go not applicable, and it would be fine. But if you live in the United States and you put down that name, Franco Collins, remember... If I was in the United States and I put down Franco Collins, I am claiming that name under my claim of right in my ecclesiastical deed sent through to vile statistics. So let's be clear here. No one should be filling in an EIN before you have established your claim of right. That would be insanity. 
If you've put in your claim of right, then the name Franco Collins is listed on your live born record as your property. So if procedurally, just as we use the name on the ecclesiastical deed to go to vital statistics, I see no risk whatsoever under the laws of necessity that you do not provide in 7B, if you live in America, the SSM of the trustee. If you do that, I don't believe you put yourself in any jeopardy whatsoever and you will be complying in honour to what the IRS require and the EINs will go through. Now that's just the latest thinking. It has not been changed on the form and there has not been an update on the site yet for that. But I'd like you all who are listening now and those that will listen to this call to think about what we've just said then and I look forward to your feedback on that. Now, last thing, trust accounts. Similar issue, trust accounts. Two things on trust accounts. The first is when you go to a bank, financial institution, and they say, what sort of trust account is this? If you say true trust, they look at you blankly and say, I don't see it on the form. People now are trained and keep their jobs by not breaching the procedures. It's the same as going to a court. It's why when you go to court and you're able to stand up and respectfully speak to the judge, the prosecutor, and anyone else in the room, their eyes pop out because they've never heard of this stuff. Why? Because they're not trained to know. So when you go to a, a, a bank and say, I want to open up a trust account, and they say, what type? You say, true trust. You're not helping yourself. Now, that's my fault. I'm sorry. Instead, what, what is the, the more appropriate is when you go there, it is a pure trust. It's a simple trust. It's a pure, simple trust. That is a type of trust in their system. They know about it. Again, we will find the section on the EDP about creating trust accounts and make that clear. Now let's talk about another issue. People have had little to no success on establishing special deposit accounts. Now there's no point in making things harder than it needs to be. If it is not a special deposit account, does it mean that the bank can take the property? Yes, it does. Absolutely it does. Why doesn't a bank permit a special deposit? Because a special deposit has specific benefits to it, which is it doesn't allow the bank to go and arbitrarily take money from it or put liens on it. Well, we are in a situation where as necessity requires a number of you, all of us in fact, need to survive. We need to have accounts. So I'm going to add to the section there the reality that if upon applying for special deposits, as people have been finding, they are continually knock back. And by the way, this is people being knocked back who have already obtained an EIN who already have set up their deed of trust. So there is no reason for the bank to knock it back that they apply for a normal deposit account as a trust account so that they at least have an account in which to use. Now, it sounds like we're compromising. We are. There's no point saying I'm, I'm willing to stand here and starve for my morals. That's what we're saying about going to court. There's no point making it easy for them to starve you out because you will not accept that the laws of necessity permit you to do what you need to do to survive. And if it means you have to open up an account rather than a special deposit account, so be it. But I want to, give, I want to leave one more thing with you. It's something we'll be raising in, in the coming days and weeks. If, as expected, those with severe mental illness and those that support them who suffer the same insanity trundle along on their plan to blow up the currencies, then there's no point spending all our efforts in their system other than touch points for survival. Instead, helping ourselves become familiar with our own currencies and helping ourselves use our own currency systems 
to develop community-based independence is absolutely vital. Vital. Now, given you have a trust account, a trust number, you have a trust account with the appropriate reserve bank of your particular region. And over coming weeks, we will provide for you the ability to purchase sovereign credits and to develop the independence in your community using sovereign credits and currency so that if, as we still see, the insane are still planning to blow up the currencies of the world, there is a way that you can inoculate your community from that event. In other words, if you have your own currency and you are trading amongst your community, who it doesn't matter from your perspective if they blow up the US dollar or the euro at the same time. It doesn't matter because you're using another currency. So I would like to go through the steps of that step by step over the coming weeks. But I think given we've now reached the end of the time for my chat tonight, uh, I'll leave it at that and just say to you that no matter what obstacle you reach, we have more. And we will continue to prepare these things and help you. So thank you, and I'm looking for questions. Thanks very much. All right, thank you, Frank. Frank. Thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. Uh, I've got a couple of callers. Let me just give a reminder. Those of you that are on the phone line, if you press star 8, it will put you in the question queue. We can get to your questions in the order. We receive them. We have Stephanie's. Are you there? Stephanie's, we've just unmuted you. Are you there? Do you have a question for Frank? All right, just put yourself back in the queue. West Michigan, are you there with a question for Frank? Uh, hi, Frank. Uh, uh, Hi. We really appreciate all the info that you're bringing to the table and uh, making us aware of. Uh, I have a buddy here, and I've been helping him to uh, study the site and uh, go over the information. Um, we haven't sipped off the depot for uh, his vital records. We'll be trying to do that Monday. But um, he has to go to sentencing in two weeks. And yep. I was just wondering if you could uh, explain to him how he should uh, deal with the matter Yes. Well, look, I, the most important thing about sentencing is this. The sentence is an offer presented as an order or presented as a command. It's an offer. It means that you have a God-given right, a divine right to decline the offer, providing, providing, you say your um, objection with respect. So say I go to sentencing and the judge says, I sentence you to five years, uh, three years um, without parole and a $1,000 fine. Before the hammer comes down, before anything, the minute the judge stops speaking, I say, I decline your offer, Your Worship. I respectfully decline your offer, Your Worship. So we have to say, you say nothing else, nothing else. I, I respectfully decline your offer. I do not accept your offer, Your Worship. You say nothing else. Now, the judge then knows absolutely that you know one of the tricks of the private bar guild and their private courts and their private law, which is they cannot secure their bonds and then sell their bonds and make money off your torture unless you accept the contract. Now, if the court had nothing to do with making money, of course, they could do what they do in China and other places. They simply say, you have no choice. We're telling you we're taking out the back and you're being shot and that's it. They take out the back and they shoot you. But that's not how the private bar guilds of Australia, America, Canada, Britain, Singapore, Germany, France, 
in most of the world run. The way those courses